Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about Google Image Search. Um, this Google Image Search can boost your traffic quite a bit. I've heard reports of traffic being boosted by 50 to 100 percent by <coughs> doing a couple things to your images. Um, I'm going to talk to you first of all about uh, naming your images and using what's called the alt tag. This is a little bit more technical than a lot of the other videos that I write. Um, you know, and I'll try to make it as plain English as possible, but I want to show you um, where you need to be putting this stuff and how you can get it onto Google image results so that you can start getting some more traffic from that. So what you can see <coughs> is I've pulled up Google and images, which you can find at images.google.com or you can just go to Google and click images at the top. Same exact effect. Um, each of these and what I did is I pulled up the words Denver Wedding in their search and so what you can see is that under that search there are results just like there would be in the typical you know top 10 but what you're finding is that these results are you know there's about 25 of them or so on the front page and they're all images and you guys may have used this before or, or may have seen some um, results from this but basically when any of these results come up let's say I was to click this one it's going to there's a frame up top and then it's you know shows me where that image lives and there it is and it's on this particular website okay and maybe I'm like ah oh, that's not what I was looking for let's go back and I kinda wanna click uh, this one looks nice, but this one looks like it's really well done as far as Google Image Search goes. So let me show you this as an example. Yeah, this is good. Um, Rucherche is a photography company in Denver, and um, and what we can see is that again it's framed. You can remove that by clicking here, and then you can see the images that they've created. Now, a couple things to note here. One is they have a watermark on each image you see, or their logo on each image. And then the second thing is that um, we, we're still not seeing this one. So let's click this one and find out what it looks like. Well, there it is. Got a watermark on it. Got their website on it. Um, very, very key. But here's the big key to it. Let me let me show you at the end here. Okay, whenever you upload an image, a lot of you guys will use the file name of the image when you took it. So if you're using Nikon, it might be DSC, you know, 1126, um, or something like that. And so when you upload that image, <coughs> anything in the address bar behind this uh, slash shows you what the name of the image is. Well, at Recherche, they have taken the time to rename the images that they post on their blog like this one says Denver area Colorado wedding dot JPEG that's what they named their image so when you go to look at this image on their computer you know maybe it's in the um, you know the pictures file or wherever it is it's actually named that and they probably um, you know my guess is and this is what I would do in workflows they have this Im they have specific images that they pull out for their blog they put a uh, watermark on it or a logo. They put their website on it, which is part of the mark. And then they rename those to be the keywords that they want to pick up. Very, very smart. They're getting some traffic from Google Images. You can see there's a couple of them here. Same company right there. Um, but that's going to be my recommendation. Whenever you guys are posting images to your website, you're going to want to rename the JPEG and let me show you how exactly to do that real quick. <coughs> okay, I've opened up some images that, um, you know, I'm just, I put them in a folder called blog photos, which you can see up here. And let's say I wanted to post a few of these to my blog. What, what you can see is that some of them, and, and this was um, out on the East Coast at Hilton Head Island, where we've uh, shot a few weddings. Um, you can see that this is Hilton Head Wedding dash one, Hilton Head Wedding dash two, Hilton Head Wedding dash three, um, and so what you see is that I've renamed some of these. Now some of them I didn't rename this one; um, it just has the bride and groom's name. So what I could do with this um, is I might say rename it to Downtown Denver Wedding. Okay. 
So it's as simple as that for a Windows machine. You um, you just click on the name of it and then click it again, and it'll give you this little open box here. And you you might say um, you know wedding in Denver. Enter. Okay, and so what happens is that is now named Wedding in Denver, and that is more keyword optimized than what it was named, which was Lanny Matt 2. So unless somebody was searching for Lanny Matt, then they're not going to find, you know, us as a photographer. And and that's the thing is, you want people to search for what you do, not who you are, and not names, because they don't know you yet. That's why they're using a search engine. If they knew you already, they would just call you. So um, so that's the point in renaming them now. If I was to go ahead and uh, put this, you know, an image onto a blog, uh, well, first of all, before we get to that, let me show you what I do for the watermark. Um, so each of these images contains a mark. Let me open it real quick. So very important that the image has your mark on it, and you can see it in the in the bottom right corner. Um, now we could probably make a little better mark by putting our website there as well um, the the thing with Kelly's name is it's a bit unique with the K-L-L-I and then N-I-X-O-N and so searching that you know if somebody was like oh I like this person's work they could just type in her name and find her right away so but if you have a non-unique name you may want to definitely put your website there or if you have a hard spelling like recherche or, or whatever um, that would probably be a smart thing to do so anyway each of these has a mark Okay, so now we get to a little bit more of the complex stuff. These are a um, couple of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, home pages that I per that I built for photographers around the U.S. I've built some home pages for uh, several photographers all around the world, um, and these home pages are optimized um, to help them get found in their in their market areas. So if you'll look with me, I'm going to hover over this image and what comes up is Los Angeles photographer and then enter website and then photography blog enter and then wedding clients enter so you notice that we have the words Los Angeles photographer photography and wedding all in what's called the alt tags of these images now if I was to take an image like this and look at the properties of it and what I'm doing is just right clicking and clicking properties then it's going to bring up the properties and what you'll see is that in the development of this home page I renamed the image to lost-angeles-photography.jpg um, again here same thing right click in properties and you'll see that I renamed this image um, wedding-photography.jpg and then I renamed this image Orange County photos.jpg okay and and these are just some of the keywords that we identified as popular in where um, William lives um, <clears throat> you'll notice here that there's some other things to optimize this but I'm you know want to specifically talk about images now the alt tag whenever you hover over an image and it says photography blog or or wedding clients or whatever those are um, generated from the alt tag and I'm going to show you where those are as I mentioned, this is a tad more technical, but I do want to give you an idea of um, where that is in the code in, in a standard HTML code, and, um, and it's something I highly recommend that you that you put into your code um, if you're not already using them. Okay, so <clears throat> as we scroll down here, what we're going to find is when we get to an image, there's one right here, and it starts with the image tag, which is this. And it tells you how how wide and how high it is. It tells you the title of the um, the title of the image. So that Los Angeles photographer enter website. That's what's coming up when we hover over it. Now, if you did not have this title, then the um, HTML can pull from the alt tag, and you know, or alternate text. Um, these were developed for people who. <coughs> um, who don't don't want to show the images, or maybe they have some seeing problems, and the you know their computer is reading to them, and so what it's doing is it's it's going to tell them um, out loud what that image really is, 
And so our alt tag on this one is Santa Clarita Wedding Photography. Um, again, we've titled the second image. And I'll show you that second image real quick. That image right there. Photography blog enter and then Santa Clarita Wedding Photographer, which is the what he wants to win on. And so that's what we did. Santa Clarita Wedding Photographer. And this image is um, the <coughs> wedding clients. So that's where it is in the code. It, it is, you know, just behind the image tag and just before the ending image tag. I know that's a little bit complex. So underneath this video, there's going to be a bit more instruction. And, um, you know, in, a lot of this really depends on what type of site that you're using for your website, whether it's written in a PHP language or a Java language or, you know, however your site's written, um, you may have to do some adjustments. That's part of why I do a, um, an analysis on every site, every client that we have at Smart Cabbage, because I want to make sure that we're building your site as optimally as possible so that you can be found on the search engines. That's it for um, images, image naming, and image alt tags. Again, always leave me questions so that I can answer those and um, possibly update these videos if we need to. Thanks again. See you at the next video.